Nama tu ratana tayasa. May I pay homage to Triple Zem, the Buddha and Dharma and the Sangha. My respect goes to my parents and my teachers. So today is Tuesday the 9th June 2020. This is Achan Sujan from Warapunya Meditation Centre in Aberdeen, Scotland. As usual, I am here with you all in the same time online, Facebook online broadcast, talking to you on a different subjects and also answering your questions. Hi everyone. Hi Margaret. Hi Manisha. Manish, Andrew, oh Andrew, I hope you are keeping well in London. <clears throat> and hi Colin, and hi everyone, those who are listening from far and wide on this occasion. And there are quite a few people, those who are following almost every night and uh, giving me a feedbacks and the comments and there are who just join in during this uh, crisis time and it seems that this year we are facing one crisis after another uh, a natural crisis and then a political crisis and then a racist crisis and so many crisis after crisis so the yeah, Buddha said that it is a dukkha. Right? The very moment uh, when we are born, we already face the dukkha. And that's the dukkha that we experienced. But later on along the way we develop our own perceptions and our own understandings and uh, culture, nationalities and so and so and whenever something takes place, something happens and we fight for the identity, fight for this is me and this is mine, it should be me and it should be mine and that's simpler because of this greed, hatred and delusion so that's what Buddha said, birth is dukkha, yeah? jati bi dukkha, birth is dukkha, jara bi dukkha, yeah? getting old is also dukkha, the suffering, biadi bi dukkha, yeah? getting sickness is also suffering, maranam bi dukkha, even going to die, you know? so dying also suffering. And these are the four natural suffering that we already have and which we cannot deny, huh? which we cannot deny. That's why we always reflect on these teachings saying that I am nature to die, I am nature to get old, I am nature to get sick. I'm not beyond this getting sickness, getting old and getting die. One who has understood such, one, one who has known that one day sooner or later I have to leave this body, this flesh and this world for the next life, then will not quarrel or will not fight and this I recall the story from the Buddha that there was a, a monastery where there are two groups of monks initially everyone was living together and uh, somehow there was a problem occur so there were two very famous Buddhist monks. One taught on the Vinaya, the disciplines of the monks, and another one was teaching the teachings of the Buddha, the discourses. 
and both were very uh, skilled and versed in the teachings and the Vinaya. And one day, a monk who teach the Dhamma, the discourses, forgot to empty the water in the toilet, a bottle, a bottle, yeah? a bucket of water. In a, um, in, in, in a monastic tradition, uh, in our tradition, whenever a monk visits to the toilet, and those days it was difficult to get the water, so it's called a wachakuting. Yeah? They have to carry the water in a small bucket. And after clean, the water should be emptied and this bucket should be upside down. And this monk who used to, who was teaching the Dhamma, the discourses, forgot, somehow he forgot. And which is obvious, you know, I can hear, I can see that because we also do occasionally, you know, sometimes we do, and forgot to flush our toilets. And I remember there was one story that happens in you know, a long time ago when I was a, a student in, a, in, in Thailand. And then I went to visit one of the monks in one of the very famous temple. And in that temple, and I went with my another friend who just visited from Nepal. And he forgot to put the water uh, in a toilet. So the uh, next day, my fr oh, no, this monk called me saying that, why didn't you flush the toilet? Next time you cannot come to my place anymore, uh, like that. So the same story happened during the time of the Buddha. This monk who taught the discourses, he forgot to empty the bucket. And there was a small bit of water left. And immediately when he left, a second teacher who taught the Vinaya, the dis discipline, saw that. That, oh, this monk, this teacher, he, was, he is so well versed in the discourse. How on earth he forgot to empty this bucket. So he told his students, it is inappropriate and it's a breaking the rules. You shouldn't be doing that. And that spread, the word spread. And then it's divided into two groups, fighting over the, same, the wa water, uh, which is not emptied, the bucket not emptied. And it's carried on to the abbot. Yeah? And the abbot called and it was discussed and they decided, okay, now uh, the monk who forgot to empty the bucket, he realized the fault and said, sorry. But they didn't stay, no? The story went on. The eh? story went on causing the friction. friction. And with that friction, what happened was that it's become divided into two groups. Unable to solve the problem and no one knows where and what is the problem and how can one solve it. There is no solution for it at all. And even the Buddha, and then later on, the scripture, the story goes on saying in the scripture that later Buddha had to intervene in that the conflict. And when the Buddha con you know, came into the scene, they even didn't believe the Buddha. But they continue practice, you know, they continue fight each other against this a bucket of water, but later on it become politicized and then later on it's become a subject of who is the best, who is the great teacher and that's so on going on and the Buddha, even the Buddha was unable to bring peace in the monastery and with that Buddha was fed up and I couldn't solve the problem and the quarrel continued going and the Buddha simply take a leave. He de departed for this forest for three months, just for himself, 
in the forest for three months. So he went and stayed in the forest. Uh, and the story says that the, uh, the monkey and the elephant looked after him during the time when the Buddha was living in the forest. But when the Buddha left, people began to realize that ah, the reason why Buddha left was simply because of the crisis, because of the fight between two groups of the monks. And no one knows what is the solution. And no one suggested what the solution is. And as a result, Buddha left and people began to complain, Pe people began to disobey, disrespect. Uh, and with that, all the monks were in trouble. And they realized that that was their fault. And they wanted to ask forgiveness from the Buddha. And they had to wait for this three months time, so-called Vassa, the Pavarana the end of the rain's retreat. And Buddha uh, was, you know, Venerable Ananda, the Buddha's attendants, went and invited the Buddha. And the Buddha said that the wise ones realize uh, that our life is very short. Having understood that life is short and one day, sooner or later, we have to die, then they will not quarrel each other. They will not fight each other. So that's exactly what is what we have to know. That we all have suffering all around already. You know, and the different forms of sufferings that we are facing. It's up to us that how we will treat and how we will understand and how we will solve the problem. There's so other uh, stories. Uh, the troubles that the dying we cannot avoid one way or another whether we like it or not we have to die this is a great suffering once we have understood that we will develop the sense of this brotherhood sisterhood or family begin being one with another building this friendship building this brotherhood rather than conflict and so-called racist that is happening at the moment. If we look back the story of the slavery 400-500 years ago, it was so nasty, so bad, but later on it gradually it lifted and gradually everyone got freedom. But that freedom again was not freedom yet. And as a result of that, this been come and the trouble started. When I was reading the Dr. Ambedkar's writings, and uh, he was one of the greatest uh, writer and uh, rev you know, evolutionary socialists, uh, and transformed the Indian caste system, that was you know kind of. Uh, heavily practiced even now is still there he one time say when he was studying in America and he was asked uh, between caste system in India and a uh, black uh, revolution that was taking place during the time of the King, Ma King Luth uh, Mart Martin Luther King JP at that time Dr. Ambedkar, he said that although the black community are still uh, having, haven't got complete freedom in America at that time, but they still have more freedom than in the Indian caste system. So that is what the Dr. Sahib, um, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar compared it and as a result he fought fought against this caste system in India and this racism again it's all around all the time I remember four years ago four or five years ago when we had this uh, Scottish independent at the time 
I have heard so many English born you know, and working in Scotland expressing such a, a, a nasty comments about themselves of being English. And the same thing, you know, Scottish people feel that how English people are treating Scotland badly. And that's again no different to any other religion, other other uh, countries. Every one of countries have got this sort of racism going on, and it's all matter to us. And everyone is matter to every one of us, and that simply is happening, is simply because this form of identity and this is me and mine I am the one I am the best I am the better so there is a comparing this sense of this perception causes the trouble when we try to make ourselves better to someone and we immediately began to build up this conflict and that is not good so the Buddha's teachings the all the Buddha's teachings is to understand that identity view that every one of us are holding on to When we are holding on to this identity view, so-called a Sakaya Ditti, this is me, this is mine. And that's how the very moment when we develop this concept of this is me, this is mine, and then we gradually develop the possessiveness. Possessiveness. And then we'll try to do every possible ways to acquire and that possessions wealth name fame gain this is called as a worldly matters so we all look for the wealth we all look for the fame we all look for the gain and we all look for the happiness and it doesn't matter how we will get the wealth how we will get the fame how we will get the gain or how we will get the happiness so all matter at that time will be my gain regardless of what and that's how we create the conflict that's how we create the differences the practice of a Buddhism or a Buddha's teachings is so that we have to let go to begin to let go and that's why practice of a letting go begins from giving a small things and if we know how to give small things and gradually develops the concept of giving even the bigger things even our own identity view and remind you again giving is not easy job because as a householder as a layperson, you have worked so hard day and night to acquire this wealth. And with this hard working, you have earned whatever you have earned, you take it as yours. So you have a possession of this is mine. And with this concept of this is mine, and gradually we want to get more and more, more and more, more and more. So the Buddha says that there is this desire to acquire more never ends. The more you get, the more you want never ends. And with this, we will try to do every possible or you know, practice immoral practices to get those desires fulfilled. So as a result of that, Buddha gave this first discourse, and you know, first uh, a print, uh, first practice is learn to give. And this giving, again, Buddha started from giving material things. 
and you have to see again the difference between the things that you don't want and it's very easy to give because you don't need any more think about uh, things that you love and you have to give it away it's very very difficult it doesn't matter how small that item is the more we put the value on the harder it becomes to let go so that's why whenever we identify ourselves that this is me this is my this is my culture this is my nation this is my race this is me at that very moment because of we have created this concept of i making my making whether it is the culture whether it is nationality whether it is ethnicity whether it is a race or whether it is a caste then we hold on to it the perception becomes so hard so dense it's become so thick to let go and that's how and uh, learning to let go learning to give small items small pennies and gradually it become a custom the mind become used to with that giving and gradually we will be able to let go bigger things yeah emotions later the second stage is ability to let go of emotions and this letting go of emotions helps to feel one another knowing our emotions and knowing other emotions and we will be able to understand that as we don't like someone to hurt us so others too as we don't like someone to you know suppress or you know, bully others are too so buddha said na hanayang na hanayang which means so having putting ourselves in their position we will abstaining from committing such things and that's how it will develops yeah. and further up the end the last bit is the ability to let go of our identity view which is the highest one and it takes a lot of you know education a lot of learning a lot of practice And in order to have this identity view, letting go this identity view, you know, first we have to have a good friend. And good friend here means a, a, a friend who could help us to find the right path. One who can lead us, teach us that which is the right path and which is, which is the wrong path. And in the meantime, when we when we are for on a walking onto the wrong path, we will be uh, w- he will be telling us off. And when we are walking on the right path, he will be guiding us and uh, praising us, appreciating us, like that person. And we hear attentively whatever advice or he is telling us to do. and with that following what he said to us about uh, how to develop our life into the happy life and we are attentively listening embracing the teachings and uh, taking into our daily routine daily practice so this practice is the third principle that we have to develop after our good friend had taught us good things and we are practicing in accordance with that and again practice alone is not enough we have to investigate whether am i doing a right or wrong so wisely reflecting on that and understanding that this life our life is so vulnerable and our life is so in a short compared to the life that we have lived and we do not know how many lives in the future we're going to live so as a human we have a very short life and this mass of the body 
again is a combination of so many other elements not belongs to us even eyes is not belongs to us ears not belongs to us we cannot control if we can control our eyes we could have said never get uh, a blurred my eyes like i am wearing my glasses and even wearing the glass you know i have to change it soon it's becoming a blurred in my ears now i'm my ears are still okay but in a future once let's say 50 over my ears will be not working perfectly as it is now our digest system our body we cannot control it's not belongs to us we simply with this body so that's fine once we have understood in this way we will not be attached to our own body and as well as we will not attach to the customs culture nationality race and ethnicity but rather we take every one of all beings are the same all the pranas or so-called all the breathing beings are same no difference to one another when we have understood in this way the sense of this difference between me and them whether it is because of the caste system whether it is because of the nationality or whether it is because of this ethnicity or whether it is because of the race so all will just vanish all will just go away i am you know in my background born in Nepal trained in Thailand and living in Scotland I am living with so many ethnic groups and you know, nationalities all the backgrounds but we live together I don't have any trouble with anyone whether they have I don't know <laughs> there are many maybe they don't like me but I don't have any problem to them when they come, I welcome them. When they feel want to drink tea, coffee, I welcome them. Uh, I have no trouble, no problem accepting them at all because I see them as me. When I see them as me, myself, there is no trouble. The only problem is when we differentiate ourselves that I am best than they are. Then that moment, all the trouble starts. The dukkha begins. So, we already have uh, this natural suffering of uh, getting old, sickness and death. Why we have to develop another troubles by creating these identities of uh, cultures and this and that and nationalities. Sometimes that I also reflect, in the past, uh, we didn't have name so-called or name cards or nationalities and so and so. We all were treated well equally but later as this standard introduction developed and these all sort of trouble introduced one after another but in a ultimate sense we're all humans are the same so we i this i offer this as a reflection for tonight uh, i just want to uh, end uh, with the words of the, uh, the dr ambedkar who says that First, we have to educate ourselves and then promote education to all. And that will solve the problems for you all, for us all. And that is exactly what the Buddha meant. Learn to know what are the things as they truly are. And then we will be free. We will be able to free ourselves and then to all. So, this is the uh, reflection for tonight and uh, may you be happy, peaceful. Uh, in a few minutes time we will have a chanting. Uh, you are most welcome to join with our chanting and guided meditation. In terms of uh, barn renovation, uh, thank you very much for Karina and Nicholas for the donation, gen generous donations towards it. And whoever would like to donate uh, for this barn renovation, you are most welcome to do so. So, see you shortly. And if you are not continuing for the chanting and uh, meditation, 
good night and we'll see you tomorrow at half past six and those who are continuing see you shortly for chanting and meditation thank you everyone for listening